My dear friends, I must be honest with you. Today, I would have preferred not to be here to preach to you. Today, I would have preferred to lock myself up in my chapel before God alone to weep and to pray. To weep and to pray for my nation where darkness has descended. To weep and pray for my church that is being stifled out of existence in the world and also in Nigeria. To weep and pray for Deborah who was killed because she found herself in a part of Nigeria she thought was home but it wasn't. To weep and to pray for my brother and friend Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka the world acclaimed voice of the voiceless who has now become soft target for those same voiceless people who see him as part of their problem rather than as part of the solution to weep and to pray for the poor miserable murderers of Deborah who have been left uneducated and unemployed deliberately so that they can be manipulated brainwashed and instrumentalized for political ends by religious bigots and political egoists to weep and to pray for people who should be leaders religious leaders who enjoy being ambivalent in the condemnation of evil when it is perpetrated by one of them to weep and to pray for our political leaders under whose watch this nation has crumbled and they keep looking for whom to blame for the mess in which they have put all of us I would have preferred not to be standing before you here now to tell you about love the liturgy of today instructs every Christian and every Christian preacher to reflect on the essence and the meaning of Christianity the love we should have for one another but how can you preach love in Nigeria How can you preach love in a country where violence has become a rule? Where hatred and intolerance have become norms rather than exception? Where corruption has become a culture and a tradition? Where impunity has become law? Where the government feels so helpless? that it is now appealing even to religious leaders to talk to non-state actors so that they will not make this security situation in our country worse those who are the words of the vice president of Nigeria while he was speaking to all Catholic bishops of West Africa gathered in a meeting in Abuja he addressed us two Tuesdays ago 
and we are wondering how a presidency could publicly admit that they have lost control, that they have left the ground so free and the country so lawless and so stateless that non-state actors now take over the entire country, not only in Sokoto and Kaduna and on the highway between Kaduna and Abuja, or between Abuja and Lokoja and Ansoka, but throughout the country. How can you preach love in Nigeria? In a country where those who want to follow the rule of law are regarded by the rest as weak. We are, how can you preach love in Nigeria? In a country that claims not to have any state religion, but constantly places a religion in an unhealthy advantage over others. How can you preach love in Nigeria? Where a few people have collected what belongs to everybody and they are doing with it whatever they please. How can I tell Nigerian students to love their neighbor, love their country, love their leaders, when their parents have paid their school fees and they are sitting at home? In a country where the ruling party within a space of less than two weeks can rake in from 27 persons 26.3 billion naira collected as fees for presidential nomination forms and the same ruling party is unable to finance our education properly such that our teachers are at home and our students are roaming the streets. How can you preach love in Nigeria? In a country where members of ASU, hear me well, members of the academic staff union of universities in Nigeria have collaborated with INEC to install misfits in power in this country because they have collected money. All the electoral officers who installed the present ruling class in Nigeria are professors of our universities, members of ASU. And INEC chairmen for many decades have been members of ASU. And whom are we blaming? How can you preach love in Nigeria? In a country where forgiveness is regarded as weakness. In a country where when you bring the light you are accused of exposing darkness. In a country where when you love, you are seen as being stupid. I would have preferred to stay at home and weep and pray for this country. But I can't.